Bisham Lecha, good morning. So, my father was listening to Smully Bornstein's Daf Yomi last night, and I overheard, it was just, it was peculiar, it bothered me a little bit, it was, he was saying over from the Ramban that when Avram went to Mitzrayim, when Avram Ravina went to Mitzrayim with Sora, it was an Avera de Raisa that he, that Avram Ravina said that Sora was a sister, because Avram Ravina should have had Bitochen, and that not only that, it was Avram Ravina did this many times, and it was because of this reason that Klai Yisrael had to go out to Gullus in Mitzrayim. And then there, there, he said Vaita that Ramosha Feinstein wrote a whole shtickle that Ramosha, that, that uh, uh, you have to cross it out from the Rabban. It was obviously not the Rabban, it's an avert to even think bad about what, one thing for even one second about Avon Ravino, and you have to cross it out of the Rabban. It was uh, obviously one of his Talmidim. It yeah. It's just interesting because I remember learning in Messias Sharm also, it was in chapter 4. The way to acquire to hear it says that because Avram Avinu asked Hashem from from where have I shall I know that I'll inherit it? And Hashem said, Chayecha ki ger yoda yodea teda ki ger yia zarecho. By your life, you surely know that your children will be strangers in the land. And it says because Avram Avinu entreated into the treaty with Avimelech, and the Kaddish Baruch Hu said that at the at the with the delay that happens to the children into the entry of the land of Eretz Yisrael for seven generations. So we see from the Seos Hashem that there is some, you know, some, but but to say it's an Avera de Rice, so, uh, I don't know, it was a, a little confusing. All right, so it's a very good question. So I'll tell you a story. That's how my Rav answered a lot of my questions throughout all the years. He has this wonderful way of always giving me a story. And the story is that there was once... A king and the king had a very very precious son now his son was uh you know independent thinker very very clever very smart good kid but one day he decides that he's going to uh you know befriend some people that are not part of the kingdom they're going to uh you know they're they're guys from the streets and he decides to hang out with them the king doesn't say anything, and then he decides that he's going to maybe wear some clothes like them. And uh, he decides to, instead of, you know, having the royal clothes, he puts a dress shirt. Instead of the royal pants, you know, he puts khakis on. And one, you know, a little while later, maybe he puts jeans. A little while later, maybe, you know, short sleeve shirt. And already over there, King stops before it gets too late, before this guy starts putting tattoos and goes crazy. Calls his son, says, I love you, my dear son, but this is not the way. He says, well, why not? What am I doing? I'm not murdering anybody. I'm not killing anybody. I'm not uh, going against uh, anything. What am I doing? He says, you're right. You're not going against anything, but that's assuming you're an average person. If you're an average person, then yeah, you should look like an average person and you'll be judged like an average person. But you are the king's son and the king's son cannot look like everybody else, cannot be treated like everybody else. And therefore, when you look like everybody else, even if it's just for the day, even if it's just hanging out, even if it's just for a moment, even if it's just for one party, already it looks bad on the king. Why? Because you're a small representation of the king. Yeah, but it's not going against the king. No, it's not going against the king. But it is for you, if anybody else would do it, they would pass, it wouldn't be a problem. But for you, it is a problem. So the same concept, the Havdil, is with the Havot. Avot, the Havot, and needless to say, also the, uh, you know, the Tzadikim, thereafter, until this day, they get judged, uh, you know, on the uh, the smallest things, not because what they're getting judged for is a sin for everybody else if they would do it. If uh, Shem told you, listen, go uh, and uh, hit the uh, rock, and you hit the rock and water came out. And then he told you, go and uh, speak to the rock and bring your staff with you. 
and uh, you speak to the rock, you don't realize it's the wrong rock, and you instead you hit it. For you, for me, it's not the end of the world. Why? Okay, we're, we're not Nevi'im, we're not, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, we're regular people. And we It worked the first time to hit the rock, so why wouldn't it work the second time? But for Moshe Rabbeinu, it was a big deal. Shem says, you missed out on an opportunity to sanctify my name. You missed out on Kiddush Hashem. Which for you is almost considered as if you desecrated Hashem's name. Not for a regular person. No. Why? It's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference for Avram. There's a difference for Yitzchak. There's a difference for uh, Yaakov. There's a difference for Moshe Rabbeinu. There's a difference for David and Melech. Hashem judges them differently. Uh, because they're so high, their judgment is, 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 is higher. Uh, same thing with the different levels of Gan Eden. You know, a person uh, could be in Gan Eden, and then, uh, you know, he makes more and more merits in this world. He wrote a book, or he did some shurim, he did some kiruv, and some of these things are yielding him more and more mitzvot each year. And uh, gets to a point where he gets to the level where he says, oh, you have to go up a level. Oh, great, fantastic, I'll go up another level. Well, before you go up another level, you have to go to uh, get judged again. What do you mean get judged? For what get judged? What do I get judged for? No, you have to get judged. Maybe you'll have to go to Gainom for a little while. What do you mean get judged for go to Gainom? Why would I have to go to Gainom? You just told me I'm going higher to a higher level because I have a mitzvot. Yes, you have to go higher for higher mitzvot, but that level requires more precision in the mitzvot, more precision in the ma'asim, and uh, things that you weren't uh, judged for in the first level. So it's possible that this uh, tzaddik that's going up a higher level will actually have to have a little dip in a uh, punishment, in a cleaning process, uh, in order to get into the next level. And certainly it's worth it. And then after he goes to the second level and everything goes up and everything is great, and he wants to go to the third level. And they say, okay, you have to get judged again. You may have to go to Gainom. Why Gainom? I didn't do any Avirot. No, no, it's not that you did Avirot. It's in the first level, no one, you know, you aren't judged for them. Second level, you aren't judged for them. And third level, certainly you're judged for them. So the same concept here. So uh, this is the type of stuff, by the way, I don't teach people. Why? Because people start losing hope. They start thinking about, oh, I'm going to Gainom anyway. And, you know, let me just become a Rasha. But, you know, you learn enough to what that I... I'm assuming and uh, Bezal Hashem succeeding in, you know, having the right assumption that you'll take this, you know, for what it's worth and uh, for the teaching for what it is, that it's in the right approach, the right way, that it's everything that Hashem does is always certainly for our benefit, even if that means a heavier cleaning process, it's still worth it. So for Avraham Avinu, Avraham Avinu was expected to have certain things and he stood by all of these big tests. It was minor things that Hashem... Uh, says in essence that it uh, weren't perfect to his capacity. If you or I or any other average person would, uh, you know, done these things, it wouldn't even be considered a sin bichlad. It wouldn't even be in our account. But if you want to be on the level of Avraham Avinu, even that has to be measured. Even that has to be measured. So that's that's the uh, that's the way it is. Now, as far as, what, you know, to, to speak about what Avraham did in our, you know, in our capacity, he did wrong, he did bad. No, that's not allowed. But when you're a gadol like uh, Rav Moshe Feinstein, with you know the the, the the world of Jewry on your shoulders, you are a gadol like the Ramban, you know, even much bigger even than 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 uh, than Rav Moshe Feinstein. He preceded him by seven hundred years, six hundred years. Uh, you know, you can't you can't go against them. That's why they, you can never ever, uh, you know, just discount the the words of the sages. Always know that any time that there is something there, that there's a disagreement between the Chachamim, uh, sometimes it requires further investigation. Most of the time it requires further investigation in order to see how they're not really so far apart, if if at all. And you see this more and more in the Gemara, where initially it looks like they're two people are a world apart, and in the end you figure out they said exactly the same thing, just that we're applying it to different things. Uh, so sometimes, most of the time it requires further ayun, uh, to, to delve into it to figure out what's actually being said. Other times you'll see that they have a different masoret and in, in this specific act that it doesn't depend on halacha. Meaning a, uh, if it's halacha, it's one thing, but if it's a midrash, sometimes there's different opinions of what's, what took place. Whether, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, Rivka was three years old or, or six years old uh, or, or, or 13 years old, you know, uh, when, when, when uh, Yitzhak married her and, uh, you know, whether uh, Batsheva was five years old when she had her first kid or six years old or eight years old or all types of very interesting things that in the world today, a lot of these things, if you say them in the... <laughs> To, to a bunch of ignoramuses. They're like, oh, what do you mean? All these uh, tzaddikim are not tzaddikim. They're pedophiles. You know, it's stupid people that don't know Torah. So it's it, the key is to understand that we are not even a grain of sand uh, next to the feet of, of, of any of these tzaddikim. And I'm just talking about the ones that are gdolim in our generation and the previous one. Needless to say, the, the Rav Moshe Feinsteins and the Chafetz Chaims and the Rav Wasserman's and the... Um, uh, ben Ishchai and uh, Rabbi Akiva Iger and the Vilna Gaon and the uh, <laughs> and the Arizal and then the Ramban and the Rambam and the uh, Rabbi Yona and uh, 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 Rabbi Nisim Gaon and then uh, you know you go to the uh, to the Amoraim uh, Abaye uh, Rava uh, and needless to say. Uh, uh, Rabbi Akiva, his rabbi, Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkinos, his rabbi, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai. Uh, then you have Hillel, and, uh, and then you have his rabbis, as is, is, is Shmaya and Aftalion, uh, you know, and then you go into, uh, you haven't even begun to the Nevi'im yet. Uh, you know, you go into the prophets. Do, you, do we have a concept of what a prophet is? Bechlal, no, nothing. Zero concept of what a prophet is. Zero, nothing. Zero, zero, zero of what a prophet is. Um, you know, so, and, and this is not even touching, touching the, the surface of David the Melech uh, or, 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 or uh, you know, or, 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 or Moshe Rabbeinu. There's no concept, no concept or, 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 or inclination of, of who and what they were. Uh, and, and needless to say, the Avot, Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, zero concept, zero, negative zero. There's, we have more knowledge about an amoeba that may live in Mars than we have about Avraham Avinu as far as his gdula. Now, of course, we have all you know different things that Hashem wanted to include in our written in oral Torah about their lives that he wants us to learn from. But as far as their significance, their impact on, the, on, the, on this world, on the upper worlds, where they stand, how much every single thing meant that they did. I mean, when they, when, when they would... Uh, uh, um, do certain acts that we don't even think are a big deal. They their their little act was more significant than us putting tefillin on. Uh, we have no concept. So again, we're not allowed to criticize or disagree with them in any way, shape, or form. But when someone is a gadol and someone has dedicated their life to the Torah in such a way that they've mamash they 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 glued. To, to the Chachamim and everything, they can make certain statements that at times can seem, wait, are they going against the Masoet? I can assure you they're not. It's, they have something to rely on. They have someone else to rely on that is saying the same thing, that is disagreeing with it in such a capacity, or that is a uh, uh, saying that this is not from, let's say in this example, not really from the Ramban. That's why it's okay to say to, to erase it. Because uh, he would never say erase what the Ramban said. He's saying to raise some students, uh, what he wrote. Why does he know some student wrote it? He said, you know, he has a Masoret that uh, I'm sure he has something to rely on, some other Chachamim that lived hundreds of years before him that said the same exact thing, and that's what he's relying on. So everything, everything has to be delved into and, and, and dug deeper, and you'll see that it all makes sense. But this all takes time. This all takes time. The main thing to always know is where we stand, at least to the best of our abilities, where we understand what, that we stand, and uh, anytime we don't understand something, we ask a question, we delve into it, delve into it, and try to the best of our abilities to understand and Bezat Hashem HaKadosh Baruch Hu would open our minds so we can understand, at least to our capacity. Chazak Baruch on a question, and Bezat Hashem, the answer should be uh, sufficient. Let me know if it's not. Wow, wow, Kfun thank you so much. Chizuk I just got from that answer, I, I can't even explain it. I cannot even explain it. It just swelled my heart. Bar Hashem. Rebbe, thank you so much. Really, thank you so much, Rebbe. Wow. Rebbe, also thank you so much for taking the time at 4.15 in the morning to send me a 12-minute message. You will arrive at your I don't destination know at how I, 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 
Just my mission. Thank you so much, baby. Thank you so, so much.